Good morning, everyone. This is I'm Trista from High Fashion Sewing Machines in beautiful Grand Junction, Colorado, the Baby Lock Girl. And I'm going to go over how to thread your Imagine Serger. Okay, so I've got my serger set up here with matching threads. The colors are matching to my thread chart. I use this fancy little sticky note just to keep me focused on which area of this whole threading chart that I need to look at. I'm going to first look here and it says use the left and right needle for this four thread overlock. So let's see here. I have both needles in and I wanted to point something out whenever you are putting your needles in. Um, right up here there's this little window and you should see the shiny, uh, the round top of the needle. You should be able to see it in the little windows and they taper. So the right needle is a little lower, left needle is a little bit higher. Okay, so now when I open Um, this machine, the tubular loopers will connect right here, but I have to do two things. I have to hold my button in and turn my hand wheel, and they will click. Sometimes you might have to wiggle the hand wheel a little bit in this uh, area whenever things are kind of lining up, depending on the machine there. So now my loopers are connected, and the order of threading doesn't matter, but it is important to make sure that it clicks in. Make sure your presser foot is up when you're doing this. Um, that keeps your tension discs open so your thread can go into place where it needs to be. If your presser foot's down while you're threading, your thread will just be sitting on top of those tension discs in here. This machine does have a needle threader. The needle threader only works when the green marks on the side of the machine are lined up. See these two marks here and here? So I have to disconnect, line up those marks. Now my needle threaders will work. Right here is a little dial with an L and R, so I'm going to flip that over to the right side for my right needle. I bring this down, pinch my thread so that I can hold it straight across under that little hook, and then allow it to pull that thread through. Sometimes it gets stuck on the hook of the threader. There we go. Now I need to connect my loopers again. Now, my thread, I have the end of my thread right here. Um, I'm going to pull it long, touch my knee with it, so that I know my thread is long enough to go all the way through those loopers. If you hold about half an inch of your thread, that's just about the right length um, to put it in there. If you're holding it out here, it's a lot more flimsy and harder to get um, put into the port. So about half an inch or three quarters of an inch. And you poke it in here. Let's see if I can angle this where you can see it. Okay, and then I push it a little bit more with my finger. Now you have a switch here for which port you're putting your thread in. We want to put it on the side that your thread is on and there it is my thread is through the looper
touch your knee with your thread so it's nice and long same thing about half an inch or so poke it in there switch my thing here and you're threaded if you push slowly here it's not quite enough force because your pressure that you're pushing here and you can hear that difference versus a hard push that hard push is what's gonna force the thread through when you're at this point I like to take my threads I sort of put my finger against the blade here and come down in front of the cutter and then I come under the foot then I have all my threads under the foot and to the back if you were to bring those threads right under here and they go in front of the cutter blade they might cut a little bit too short for them to actually connect when you start stitching okay so my threads are back I'm gonna slide this over and that disconnects my my loopers if you can see those here the visual really helps me so I try to point those things out for you as well so I'm gonna slide this open and now your parts can move when you press on your foot pedal now I'm going to look back to my threading chart and see that my four thread overlock is asking for selector a and right here is where we see that and sometimes I will move it just to make sure that it's on that same letter close the doors now right here this shows your differential feed and just to get a flat stitch which is what we're going for right now uh, we want it to be on N okay and then on the inside here you have your stitch length and your stitch width and something that has helped me quite a bit to keep these straight is the visual so when I turn this you might see right here and if you're looking straight on you can see the blade move where the blade is at will be the edge of your fabric so for me that visual really helps right in here this little piece of metal I it's sort of like a finger is there when I switch from a standard stitch to roll so on your wheel here you'll see standard and rolled hem when you're on standard that metal finger is out stabilizing that edge of your fabric and your threads when you turned it to rolled that's what allows your thread to pull your fabric and turn it under for that rolled edge so just having that visual maybe will help you remember which ones are which I'm going to close up there on the chart here you have a length and width recommendation now these are flexible for example on the rolled edge three thread rolled edge it says 0.75 which is the lowest that you can go so it's that very first right here when you're on the zero the arrows there so that first little click that's your 0 0.70 okay or four so that's your whole range so really it's a personal preference um, depending on your fabric you're using so you'll want to kind of play with that and see but I know that about two and a half is sort of a regular stitch length so we'll set it at that and my width I'm gonna go wide 7.5 perfect overlock stitch it's so pretty I love that now we're switching from the four thread overlock to the three thread narrow the only difference here is we're gonna take that red thread off the machine and we're gonna take that left needle out we're gonna switch our selector from A to B so let's jump in and do that your storage compartment here that's where I keep my screwdriver to, for needles 
Now when I'm taking the thread out and the needles, I like to cut my thread real short here so that it doesn't tangle up with the other threads. Okay, I lift my presser foot up and I just run the machine till that red thread comes out. Perfect. Okay, now I'm going to turn this up and take the needle out. Lefty Lucy. Then you'll want to tighten your screw so it doesn't fall out as you're stitching along. Okay, now I'm changing my selector to B. And that's the only change I really need to make. Press your foot down. Sometimes your presser foot looks like it's down because this piece here is pressing the toe down so that your presser foot can push your fabric against your feed dogs to help it move. So you always want to make sure your presser foot's down. Look at that beautiful three thread overlocks narrow. Perfect stitch. I love it. Going from the three thread overlock narrow to a rolled edge, I'm going to use selector D. And right there, there's a little R, and that is very important. Remember that little piece we talked about? We're moving that out of the way. And we're going to selector D. That's the only two changes made. Look at that really nice three thread overlock stitch. Now every once in a while it might sort of pull your fabric and if you just slide your thumb across it that sort of sets the stitch and look how smooth that fabric is now. Now the stitch length is totally variable so you kind of play with that to get the look that you want but those are the most common three stitches that I use on this machine. Okay, so just a review. We did the four thread overlock, removed that left needle that had the red thread on your threading chart, went to, from selector A to B, and did a three thread narrow overlock. Okay, and then from that one, we went to the three thread rolled edge. We went from selector B to, to selector D rolled the stitch length from a standard over to that rolled and got a beautiful rolled edge. Works best on a single layer of fabric. And if you have other questions, let me know and I will do my best to answer them. Thank you. Have a great day.